Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we're here at Outernet London with the all new Electric Explorer. Today is launch day and we're going to have a quick walk around the car and show you guys our favourite things. Let's go for it. First things first, let's start up front with the Explorer. Noticeably is what's known now as the shield. What Ford have been able to do here is they've been able to redesign their front grills because there's no longer an internal combustion engine here. What that has done, which I love about the Explorer, is they've redesigned and enlarged the Ford Oval. This really adds to the sort of presence and brand awareness of Ford. This is really a celebration of Ford's new era in electric vehicles. Up front here, we've also got the nice Explorer lettering detail on the grill. Again, something we've never really seen here in the UK, but I love this feature. It's also mirrored on at the tailgate, which we'll see when we get around the back. The headlamps really give the front end a sense of personality, and I love the way that they're sort of integrated and carved in to this front shield. Overall, the Explorer will have plenty of road presence, even though on paper, it's smaller than you'd expect. In terms of sizing, the Explorer actually slots in between the Puma and the Cougar, measuring at 4.46 metres in length. In terms of range, Ford are still working on the final figures, but the aim is for 500 kilometres, which is around 300 miles. The one thing that we do know is the charging time, which takes 20 minutes from 10% to 80%, which is fantastic. So the profile of the Explorer is actually quite simple and clean. And what I really like is how the belt line continues all the way along the doors and on top of the fenders. Also, you've got this black A-pillar, which gives the impression of seamless glass continuing all the way around from the windows onto the windscreen. Wheels come in three options, 19s, 20s and 21s. The Explorer here today features the premium 21-inch alloys. Also, staggered offset on these so the fronts are a little bit less concave compared to the rears. They also feature, as you'd expect, an aero design which you see in a lot of electric vehicles today and I think these actually look really cool. Towards the back of the car, one of my favourite design features has got to be these really slick C-pillars. Not only does it bring in more light into the cabin, but it helps to continue that kind of narrowing down look towards the back of the Explorer. Also, we've got these kind of futuristic graphics and they sort of signify the fact this is an electric vehicle. To the rear, I really like how the tailgate is quite abrupt. What you see in a lot of family SUVs these days is this sort of long tailing shape. But in the Explorer, it's actually quite bang, bang. This square shape really helps the utility space inside the boot. And I also think it really adds that sort of boxy look of the Explorer. The rear taillights are also a real feature the really monochromatic design really adds that overall sleek, simple look. Again, less is more. These feature just a complete clear glass and only see the red lights when the brakes or lights are actually on. Let's open up the back end and talk about the boot space. In here, we've got 450 litres of storage. It's a false floor design, so you've got your upper boot and when you lift this up, the lower boot. This is adjustable, so you can set that to suit your demands. Also, really nice feature is down here you've got a drop down section in the boot finally somewhere to put those electric charging cables this is a great wee feature also you can chuck trainers and stuff in there if you've been out and about love this touch okay so the interior of the explorer is a lovely place to be architecturally the dash is sort of split into three sections you've got this lower section you've got your middle section with all your fans and then you've got this. I absolutely love this. It reminds me of like a sort of television soundbar on top of the dashboard. And I can't wait to eventually get this fired up because I'm sure it's going to sound fantastic. The finish of the seats in here are very similar to the Mach-E. 
This again features the Sensico leather, which is Ford's vegan leather, man-made product. Really strong and durable and lasts actually better than the real deal. This is the premium interior option. There will be an Explorer pack which will feature half Sensico leather and half textiles. In the centre console, we've got this stunning 15 inch display. Again, quite reminiscent of the Mac E, but this has a really nifty feature. Watch this. How cool is that? What this does is it allows you to have the screen in whatever viewing you prefer. This, as it's known, is the active viewing. This would be great for, say, you're driving and you've got your maps on, you kind of want to concentrate. But if you know the route and you want it out of the way, slot it back down like that keeps it nice and super clean and really ties in with that architectural look that you've got inside the Explorer. What I like about the new sync system in this is that the instrument controls are actually fixed in the screen. So your AC, your heating will always be here no matter what you've got going on top of the display, which I think will really assist in people trying to navigate their way around controlling the cabin temperatures, etc. You've also got the digital cluster here. Again, this has really been simplified in the Explorer and it just gives you that must know critical information where all the nice features will be here out your way and you only need to look at them when you want them. Down the centre console we've also got a couple of physical buttons with haptics which is really nice. You'll have this sort of slider to control the volume and then you've got on and off button and your parking camera sensors. Just in behind that you've got a bin big enough to fit two full size phones both with wireless charging pads again really nice feature. Then we get onto the all singing, all dancing mega console. This holds a huge 17 litres of storage. My arm completely disappears in here. Also, really nifty feature. Cup holders are removable and you've got a couple of interchangeable sections for in here to suit just like a basic pocket or your cup holders. Don't want these, they pop down here and a really nice little storage slot. And then, your 16 inch MacBook, which you always leave just lying on your seat. Pop that in there. Close it up, and you're on your way. Final special bit of storage that I want to talk about, and also, I just wanted to slide the screen again, because how cool is that? Is what's called the secret locker. If you put your phone in there, slide that back down. When you jump out, lock the vehicle, this mechanically locks as well, so you know your stuff's gonna be safe. Let's quickly jump in the back and talk about how much space we've got in there. Okay, so there's a few things I wanna talk about back here. Firstly, is space. Look how much room I've got. This front driver's seat is adjusted to me, and there's absolutely tons of room here for your passengers. Also, incredible amounts of head height. And if you hadn't already noticed, look at the size that panned roof. You normally find with a panel roof that the head height's reduced, not on the Explorer. And believe it or not, there's a meter squared of glass up there. Absolutely stunning, and I love how it just fills the cabin with light. To be honest, I think the Explorer actually really is inviting. When you're outside the vehicle looking in, all the glass really makes you want to get in here and sit in this really comfortable space. Again, with it being an electric vehicle, you've got no rise in the floor in the centre. So the person who's unlucky to sit in the middle is actually going to have a pretty decent ride. And there we go. There's a first look at the all new Electric Explorer. We are absolutely buzzing about this product coming to market and we can't wait for you guys to see it in the flesh. You can reserve this car now. Please pop into one of the dealerships, talk to some of our sales staff about it. They'd love to talk to you about it in more detail. If you get on that reserve list, you're looking at probably getting your car in early 2024, which really isn't that far away. If you like this video, please like it. If you've got any questions at all, please ask us in the comments, and please subscribe to our channel for more videos like this, and we'll see you in the next one.